an art gallery in Harare, Zimbabwe that promotes the visual arts and supports young artists, was established in 1975 by ex-policeman Derek Huggins and his artist wife Helen Leros in the midst of the Zimbabwe Liberation War. You asked me why the, uh, the art's so important. It is not uh, easy to summarise that... Uh, quickly or without considerable thought. But instinctively, one would say that it involves the creative in men. It involves something that is close to the spiritual. Um, it is man's effort to, to create uh, and to be as perfect uh, as possible in creation as it can be. If there was, there was no art in life, then probably life would be boring. Yeah, we we'll just wake up, eat our food, do whatever jobs we are supposed to do in life, then go back to sleep at the end of the day. I think art is not actually important. Especially for me as a painter, art is life. And life is light. And uh, whenever I could see color, I see the presence of light, and where there is light, there's life. So I think uh, to actually say art is important, I think is to try to create a social hierarchy. But uh, to actually realize art is the basic ingredient that is needed in everything else, then I, I believe the role of an artist becomes quite clear. Deep within me, there's a fire and it burns to my very bones. Man is also not just matter, but there's also something else deeper within him. And uh, he communicates in his pictures, he communicates in his words, in his music, his spirit lives, flows, rises above like a dove. We make it important because it's important to us. Um, but I think that the majority of the world would happily do without it. Uh, the world is not geared towards the arts. They take a very, in general, take a lowly place in the scheme of things in terms of what's important for education, in terms of what's important for entertainment. But there's a, an essential part of us that likes, that needs to see things, that needs to respond to the visual world. We belong to category of people where art is not a luxury, it's a necessity. We are passionate collectors, not for investment reasons or whatever. It's this never-ending dialogue with the work. When I collect something, I don't say to myself, I have bought a piece of work. I actually adopt a child from the artist, and I really mean that. It's part of life, it's not a luxury. It's a necessity. It's part of life. I think our relationship has gone beyond. It has actually gone beyond Art. You know, when I relate to them at times, it's, it's, I can also relate to them on a personal level. So I wouldn't say my relationship with them is just based on art. Art was just a door through which I could relate to them um, in certain other ways. Uh, so they are so close to me. 
with Helen, her relationships are she's more like a mentor. She's more like a tutor. She's more like this God has. I have this mother. I have, you know, before I bring any work that I have made home, I got to think twice about it. You know, what she will say, how she will look at it. Because for me, she's still Im important. You've got Derek, who, whatever his I ideology is, he has a, f a focused view. He's had a view since Gallery Delta's inception that he was going to build a type of art. And you've got an extraordinarily driven woman as his wife, as, as partner of Gallery Delta. We call him Sekuru. Inshona Sekuru is the father of my father, my grandfather. But in this instance, it's not like that. It's more of respect, uh, more of love, and more of uh, acknowledging his, his white hair, his white beard, and his age. He's very kind. He can shout at you for asking for money, but he will still give you the money. He can complain that, uh, you know, everybody's coming to me with all their problems, but he, he will still solve them. We've got our own little weird relationship where if somebody comes and he finds us shouting at each other, you will think, oh my God, but come back tomorrow morning, we'll be smiling at each other, you know, secretly. We'll be smiling at each other. My life as a detective and a detective inspector with the police continued until late 1974. But I became disenchanted with the life of a detective and also the political circumstances in the country at that time were immensely worrisome because we were slipping into and slipped into a guerrilla war. And in my life, I was undergoing uh, a spiritual search. Uh, I say spiritual search, yes, because there was nobody that really understood my, uh, my disquiet and my internal uh, pain and suffering, and uh, there came a time where I turned to God. I went on my knees, I asked forgiveness and uh, repented my sins and asked for guidance. Lord, concerning the works of my hands, guide ye me. And I, uh, I knew relief, I knew relief of burden. I determined uh, to open a gallery. And it happened one day as I walked uh, from the central police station where I worked up what was then Manika Road between Angua and First Street, I turned into an alleyway. And going inside, I found an atrium and uh, a row of little shops, as it were, rooms around an atrium with a catwalk on the first floor. I, I was taken aback. I mean, this was just like a leap into thin air. I just thought, he's absolutely crazy. I went back to my office at the central station and I wrote my resignation there and then. Of course, thereafter, I was hit by many doubts and uh, worries and indeed fears about what I was embarking on. To try to create a gallery uh, for the benefit of the painters in the town who were not given enough opportunity via the National Gallery to show their work there, and uh, by April uh, the 17th of 1975, we were able to open the first exhibition, which I believe was a show of Japanese graphics at Gallery Delta at Strachan's buildings. While we knew that a, a tiny gallery of three rooms in the midst of uh, conflict and war and sanctions would not make a living for us, uh, I was fortunate to get a job with the National Arts Foundation as their chief executive. And the gallery all down those years was run as a voluntary, part-time, weekends, nights, occupation, to keep the exhibitions coming in, to do some promotion. Uh, and uh, the ground at that time was, uh, was fertile, in a sense. We had, we had a very good following. And in the atrium of that building, it was like having a, a captive audience. Once they were in, uh, they were 
quite closely packed and uh, give me a glass of wine. It was always quite a, a jolly and enthusiastic uh, occurrence when we made our shows. We had the Colonial Saxophone Mafia come in and play, and that was incredible because wow. they were they were about six or seven saxes, uh, and they went around the gallery through the rooms playing. We had poetry, poetry recitals, uh, jazz, uh, Nick Van Heerden, uh, the jazz man. Fantastic. Here, jazz perspectives we did in that courtyard, sort of cafe, cafe restaurant, cafe, cafe theatre, cafe music. I should die, but I put water. I put water, it will be too. <clears throat> One day I was walking, 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 and I saw the ga uh, gallery board there. And I said, I can't see on the road any uh, gallery. So there was an Indian shop there. I asked him, where is the gallery? And they said, go inside. Slowly I went into the gallery to see the all work. And I said, oh, this is a beautiful work here, which I was looking for, artistic work, than National Gallery. And then slowly, slowly I went to Helen. I introduced myself again. I said, I am coming from India, Bombay, I'm a painter and so and I would like to show you some of my drawings. Would you like to see? And she asked me, would you like to give it? I said, I, I'd be happy. So opening day, all the drawings sold it. I myself felt that was the most important period of my life, apart from my studies, because it was such an incredible challenge. You couldn't find materials. And all of a sudden, us, and I'm putting myself, who were making pictures, we were like picture makers, all of a sudden we became creative. We couldn't find paper, we had paper. Then I started doing the collage, which I had never done. There were no paints, then you started making your paints, which I'm still doing to this day. At that time, of course, it was Rhodesia. And there was lots of problems, okay. Because uh, at that stage, everybody was talking about a solution, trying to find a solution. Because there was this uh, small minority of white people administer administering over the, uh, the great majority of the blacks, okay? And some people found it uh, immoral or not right, okay? And they started to make their, their uh, suggestions or their opinions known, okay? It was an attempt to moderate the situation from the very hard-lined Rhodesia front, the hard necks of the Rhodesia front, okay? And uh, of course, this found, uh, found its place in, uh, in protest painting. At that stage, I never thought that artists could be remunerated from their work. I was doing it for a therapy, like compulsive painting, okay? Because I was exposed to the Rhodesian war and worked as a medic in the army, okay? And to get some relief, from the atrocities that I'd been exposed to, I started to paint frantically, like how Marshall did, okay? In a peculiar, almost perverted sense, it brought out the best of some of the then already established artists. Everyone lived a little on edge. So people, artists, got their inner views of their chest through their work. They would just paint or sculpt or get on with it. I recall every single opening in those days, exhibition opening, was well attended. One looked forward to, to go to an exhibition opening. These sort of moments one wouldn't miss. And as an aside, I can tell you, unless I've been out of town or traveled, obviously for professional reasons, out of Zimbabwe, I, I think I have attended upwards of 95% of every single uh, exhibition opening. That speaks for itself. If it wouldn't have been good, you don't go there. 
In 1991, the owner of Strachan's Buildings in Manika Road decided to sell the building and wanted everybody out. Derek was forced to start searching for another space for the gallery. I put word out uh, to uh, all our clients and following. And it was Colette Wiles, uh, the daughter of Robert Paul, who came up and said, what about the old house? We had always wanted to retain this old house as a museum, uh, or whatever, for, for sentimental reasons. And um, we didn't want to knock it down and put up flats, which was what everybody advised. They said we were quite nuts because it was in a very poor state of repair by then. And um, then Derek needed a new venue and he came to 110, looked at it and said, well, yes, it's got the right atmosphere, it's got the right feeling. It is one of the oldest standing houses from the white history in this country. And a very, very well-known artist, Robert Paul, used to live here until he died in 1980. But the spirit of an excellent artist somehow lived in these premises. But coming here, um, I had a good feeling that while the house was Daring. dilapidated and Daring. derelict at the back, just terrible. Uh, it could be made to work as a gallery. Consequently, I shut down at Monica Road and moved here in June 1991, whereupon we worked for six months to make something of the garden um, and to restore this front veranda and the length of the building where we have the main gallery and other galleries. And by December of 1991, we were able to open with an exhibition of landscapes by Robert Paul and in tribute to Robert Paul. I regard myself as being very fortunate to stand here this evening in front of this wonderful old house uh, because I re never really dreamt that we'd come up with a space like this. And I came here and I sat and I thought, and I thought, well, this has to be the space because it felt right. And there was the challenge, the opportunity to turn an old building round the corner uh, to restore, and yet I knew nothing about restoration. It took us two years with a small, a small uh, crew, uh, builder and carpenter and some labour. That was Charles Niamatemba, and Charles did a fantastic job. And Derek, by nature, is not a manual person. I can't believe how he worked and he cleaned and fixed right throughout. You've got to realize I'm a different character. I want something now. You know, uh, I've got to do it now. Derek is tempo and, and tolerant and patient. And it's his patience that made this place. Everyone from day one of the gallery's history at these premises saw the charm and the history in it. And people loved to come here. It wasn't just the spirit of a gallery. I believe one should say, Gallery Delta became an institution. It was almost a refuge. Gallery Magazine was established to record the best of Zimbabwean contemporary art. The quarterly 32-page full-color visual art magazine ran to 31 issues of 1,000 copies per issue from 1994 to 2002. I think my memory would take me to the gallery magazines. That was my very first introduction to uh, contemporary art. Um, because when I came here, we were, the, the gallery was still making the gallery magazine. They were still uh, publishing it. And um, I think I saw about four or five issues of it. And, um, you know, before packing it and sending it to different people, you'd sit and read it through, you know, read every, every word and be so fascinated about it. And I would, I would like to say I'm a proud owner of all 31 issues. 
but significantly he was uh, Jan really? Vossen, the director, came into the gallery in about 1995 and said, how can we help you? And I said, well, you could put some money into this magazine. And so he was sponsored the magazine for about six years until, it's, uh, until it went into abeyance in 2002 or three. The 90s uh, for the gallery uh, was a good period. I mentioned already that we were growing up uh, a body, a group of seven or eight young artists, which we, uh, which we drew basically from what was then the BAT artwork. Uh, we had sadness uh, and sorrow in uh, 96, Stephen Williams died. 97, Henry Thompson died. 97, Ishmael Wilfred, Louise Meck, Vasonia Sabanda, all died. They died, those three, as, as, as young people coming into their, or in their, in their prime Fine. as young artists. Particularly Louise Meck, who was a, a linchpin in the development of that contemporary movement. We built around Louise Meck. And then uh, we lost uh, Henry Kashiri in 2001, another very good painter, and George Chu in 2002. Despite the increasing economic hardships and political challenges facing Zimbabwe, the gallery managed to take part in international collaborations and had two large and very successful exhibitions in Munich. It was difficult to take another exhibition out to Munich uh, in the, uh, in the ensuing decade of uh, 2000 to 2010 uh, because of the decline in the economy in Zimbabwe and because of the uh, exorbitant uh, inflation that we suffered. But with effect 2009, uh, early 2009, and the uh, change to uh, the US dollar as currency, it became more feasible to contemplate an exhibition again in, uh, in Munich. We, uh, we had to export an exhibition, and uh, it was over 100 works uh, by, uh, by 25 and more artists around us, a broad-based exhibition, um, very diverse uh, and with a lot of variety. We had a very good opening. A, a big crowd of people who were interested, enthusiastic, appreciative, uh, and who reacted well to the work. The Munich ex experience to me was, um, um, it was enlightening in that, you know, my, my, my eyes opened. You know, I was, I was so impressed in that, um, I mean, the way that our, 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 our art, our sculptures, our prints and our paintings uh, were accepted in Munich, it was, it was amazing. People loved our work. Um, and for that, it was like a feedback to me from Europe. I mean, how they, they look at our art. We do not show pretty, pretty picture making of a happy, happy idyllic Africa. We are into far more serious things, art for art's sake. And consequently, uh, sales have been slow and difficult in this decade. So much so that from about 2005, 2006, we have been gradually but increasingly donor and sponsor dependent. We continue to make exhibitions of high standard. It is remarkable what our, our artists, our painters and others uh, actually do. They respond fantastically to the cha challenges that we, uh, we offer them. Uh, but we remain in, in, in difficulty. We are, in a sense, a poor gallery with poor artists, but we manage to survive. But rich in color and rich in spirit. The circus of Zimbabwe is not different from the rest of the world. Uh, neither are our problems quite peculiar only to Zimbabwe, but I think the way we express and how we would want to get to that solution, perhaps is not in the same course as everyone else. And uh, the stage which we have been in the last decade, I think can never be ignored. The struggle is part of our history. And I believe the artists owe it to the next generation to put everything as it is.
rather than they should try to have a cosmetic way of expressing themselves so that they can survive. I've got an exhibition at the gallery at the moment and it's about 39 drawings, live drawings, and I've just managed to sell two. And I've really put the price down, okay? And still no takers. So we are actually in a crisis. I think the whole arts community is in a kind of crisis. Okay? There's all kinds of things, without being political, there's all sorts of crises appearing or looming in front of us. There's the election for one. Uh, I mean, the, the, before there was a large white community of people who were appreciators of the arts. They have now all disappeared, okay? Who buys art? I don't know, age is creeping in. I think that's my fear at the moment. I have never felt old. I'm not saying that I'm not, but I have not. And all of a sudden you think, you know, time is coming on. I just feel that I want the Gary to carry on living. It's hard. It's very hard. You have to also give new ideas, new, new perspectives. You have to give a new, fresh outlook. You can't just carry on churning um, the same thing over and over as far as I'm concerned. I never give up, but I just feel that it's another big challenge for the future because you don't know what's going to happen. Everybody tries to be as positive as possible but it's, there's always that big question mark coming up. After 40 years of active involvement in the daily running of the gallery and acknowledging that they were not getting any younger, Derek and Helen decided to give away the assets of the gallery into trust to create the Gallery Delta Foundation for Arts and the Humanities. It's very difficult when you start separating arts from economics. And when you take a rom romantic ideology that art has nothing to do with economics, um, you've, you've put yourself in a paradoxical position because you rely on that to keep it going. And you can't simultaneously um, d deny the, that your existence is economically based um, and say that the arts have nothing to do with it. One could say that we had to find out ourselves in 1975 how to run a gallery. Uh, we knew that uh, sooner or later there had to be change in the country and we wanted to be prepared for the change and what that might bring. Would we have changed anything else? I don't know. I don't know uh, how else that we can run a gallery other than the way that we run it because that is the way that we have formulated and run. What has to be said is that they they have stood there for 37 years and promoted the arts. Whatever flavor they have done, they've promoted the arts. They've held essential qualities of the arts. They've held the artist at their heart all this time. And they stood there in, through the worst of this country. And the fact that no one has managed to offer alternatives illustrates really what they've done. It illustrates their achievements. And, and so for the people that do point their fingers, that do say they don't cater to this or to that or to the other, then I would say you, you do it. Stand up, find your own way. If you don't find that your work is being facilitated or your flavor or your ideology, which is what it comes down to, then you do it. Um, the fact that no one has done, I think, says a lot. None of us who has a relationship with Gallery Delta Foundation must ever forget the enormous energy and staying power Derek and Helen have produced here. It's unique. I've traveled with the exception of the Antarctic on every continent. And I've visited, I suppose, over 80 countries. I've not come across that type of spirit readily elsewhere. You know, just knowing that Gallery Delta is, is survived, you know, so many galleries, private galleries have closed down because of um, um, less business. But Gallery Delta is one gallery that I know that has managed to sail through, even through the difficult times. If it managed to sail through the storms, I mean, that we've gone past as a country, then I think it also has, you know, energy to, to go into the future. I'm not unhopeful, I believe there will be a breakthrough, there has to be a breakthrough. 
I think it's possible that finally people realize what this entity has actually achieved. I think I should go one step further and say, with no disrespect to the National Gallery of Zimbabwe, this gallery, this foundation, over many, many years actually played a role which is normally ro uh, uh, played by, by a National Gallery. And those people who really matter and can see into this entity cannot but see it would be disastrous if it would have to close down. For everyone, for for the for the society of Zimbabwe, this is this is a bit like a lighthouse which stands there quietly and flickers its light, in spite of all the storms we have gone through yesterday, today, and maybe tomorrow. For those who uh, are passionate uh, and have the need to create, to express themselves, to become individuals thinking individuals, active individuals that make a difference in the world, then we must do our best to give them as much encouragement as possible. And that is possibly why that having married an artist, Helen Miros, 45 years ago, that uh, I developed perhaps an empathy for the artist and for art. There was a spiritual way in my life that it became important to me and it seemed it opened the way for me to follow this course in my life. And that is the way I've followed and continue to follow.